Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the last episode of our Doing It Vision Season 4 episode. Ten. Number 10. Wow. We are Roxana and Anton from Arduino Education. So how are you? Say hello in the chat. Tell us who you are and from where you are joining. Mm -hmm. And we're live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Crowdcast. Hit the yes. thumbs up button if you're watching this episode from YouTube, heart if you're watching from Facebook, and light bulb on LinkedIn. That's true. And uh, if you want to learn more about education, technology, coding, read articles, watch tutorials, mm -hmm. and of course, the previous Eduvision seasons, mm -hmm. you can go to our website, arduino.cc education eduvision. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. also find our new Eduvision podcast. We have 10 episodes available on Spotify, Anchor, and Apple. And in the chat, there's a direct link to the podcast as well. Yes, exactly. So now we are seeing that people saying hi from Zimbabwe. Oh, that's so cool. Zimbabwe, nice, nice. Ghana, Colombia. Hola, Cali, Colombia. Ooh. From Madrid, Spain. Madrid. Nice. nice Just nice, keep nice. writing us from where you're, you're joining. That's mm -hmm. so cool to know. Cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, today we will talk about science as on November 10th, so yesterday, we celebrated World Science Day for Peace and Development that highlights the significant role and relevance of science in society and in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And we asked you on social media, who is the best fictional scientist character? Oh, yes, we have a poll. So let me show you. Mm -hmm. There it is. So is it Emmett Brown from Back to the Future, Dr. Emmett Brown? Seven or nine, I think that's from Voyager, right? I think so, And yeah. then Dana Scully from X-Files. And Sheldon or Cooper. Or Sheldon Cooper. So what if I vote to see how many, how are, how is the voting going? So which is your favorite? And then I will hmm, click. My favorite would probably be Doc Brown. Click. Yeah, click. Doc yes, Brown. look at that. Nice, nice. 42, yeah. Dr. Brown. and Sheldon is pretty funny. Yeah, though. it's cool too. Yeah. So, but then keep, you can keep voting on the social media and also, yes, that's the overlay. And also you can uh, tell us on the chat which one is your your favorite scientist from series and movies. Nice. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a scientific and fun look <gasps> at music with the, an experiment that we have prepared. So let's take a look. Yes. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's very, it's very, it was very fun, yeah. a very fun experiment. Mm -hmm. So, you know that science teaches us that sound is vibration, and the frequency of vibration it was ma it what makes different sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thanks to science, we know that sounds happens when an object vibrates. For example, when your finger plucks a string, the string vibrates and disturbs the air around it, making an invisible sound wave. And we hear the sound when the wave travels through the air and to our ear. Yes, and as you know, our ears only pick up a discrete range of frequencies, so we can hear frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Yet, within this range of audible sound, the brain can elicit an enormous array of responses. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a sneak peek of the experiment mm -hmm, we were mm -hmm. trying today, but um, later on, we're going to discuss more a little yes, bit yes. this and what you can do with the app that you saw so they're on the phones. Mm -hmm. So just let's say hi to people that are keep writing from India, Darshan, from Barcelona. Nice. So that's so cool. From Tennessee, India, USA. Ooh, US. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. So keep telling us guys from Malta. Oh, that's cool. And Argentina. Hola. Hola, hola. That's cool. Thank you so much for joining today. Nice. But uh, to learn more about science, we have a great guest today, Dr. Erika Colón. Erika is a national board certified teacher with over 12 years of experience 
uh, in six to 12 grade secondary science, including physics science, biology, chemistry, earth science, and marine science. Mm -hmm. And Erica holds a doctorate in curriculum and instruction with a focus in science and technology. And in 2012, she founded Nitty Gritty Science, where she mm -hmm. continues to design and publish science curriculum, which can be found in thousands of classrooms around the globe. That's correct. So uh, let's welcome Erica to the show. What is the nitty gritty of learning science? How do we learn science? <laughs> well, it's easy. You have to start at the basics, right? Mm -hmm. You have to kind of keep building on this knowledge. And at the time when you start, no matter what level you are at, you have to keep it interesting for the students and you have to keep it relevant to what they know around them. And so when I say that, uh, you know, I always just said, let's get down to the nitty gritty guys. We need to kind of break this down first. Let's go to simplistic and then we'll see how this works in your the system that you see out here today and natural phenomena that you see. But it's kind of just starting at the basics. A lot of times those pieces are foundations for other things that are going to be relevant in their life. And when we lear learn about like air pressure or something, and we're showing them this, this formula with air pressure and Bernoulli's and say something like that, we're talking about pressure laws. Maybe in your real life, you are not going to understand that you have to go ahead and plug in this these numbers for these uh, pressure laws. But in real life, you are going to be dealing with air pressure when you're filling air in your tires, when you have kids and you're building this and, and you have to understand you can't overfill the tires. And, and so those are just very simple applications in real, real life. And then you might move into jobs where you have to understand how different pressures of gases work. And um, if you're working with, with tanks that have different types of um you know, uh, chemicals and stuff in it. So it all depends on where you're going to go. But all of this kind of, I mean, we make these connections in our brain and then they start tying together with other things. How did you realize that nitty gritty science was needed? What kind of resources does nitty gritty science provide for teachers? It's funny because I did not go into starting nitty gritty science. I started because um, I was going to go back and teach science teachers. That's what I was. I was in this transition. I was pregnant with my daughter. Um, I was going to go back after the pregnancy um, and we were going to move and I, I had a job lined up to teach. My daughter ended up getting sick and I she had to stay in the hospital for a long time. So I couldn't go back into teaching. And um, so I had to do something from home. And at this time, um, I, my mom sent me this article, hey, this teacher's making money writing curriculum. And I said, well, I, I can do that. I can write curriculum. So I thought, well, what's the easiest one to teach? What's the easiest one to create? Matter. Everybody likes matter. I can do something matter. Everybody knows solid, liquid, gas, and boom, boom, boom. I push this out. I put it online. Does nitty gritty science? I'm, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get to the nitty gritty of matter, solids, and liquids, and gas. I'm thinking I'm smart here. I got this. And I made like $13 in a year. And I was like, look at this. I, I'm making money selling this, right? And it really didn't go anywhere from that. I'm thinking this, you know, this is matter. And then I got to thinking like, okay, Erica, now I just put out matter, but every teacher can teach matter. They can teach solids, liquids, and gases. So I really had to stop and think when I knew that um, I was not going back into the classroom and this was not going to be a hobby. Like this is what something I need to really focus on and how, since I'm not able to help science teachers in person, that was my goal. And it, it, it took a little bit of a, mind shift too. I, I, that's not the way I saw my life going. I really was like, oh man, I, this is what I want to do. I want to help science teachers. So I do a little mind shift and I said, well, how can I help science teachers now? So then I thought to myself, well, there is a product that I love teaching with. It's called a science interactive notebook. And the one thing that a science interactive does, it's one of the most successful resources because students build it out themselves, but you have to provide the activities in it. And um, it's very hard to make it through a year as a teacher if you tried to build one on yourself because it takes so much time to find activities, to relate them, to uh, use those notes. And it is a, uh, and, and at that time, you have to just kind of go on the internet and piecemeal thing. This isn't something you could just buy an interactive notebook online. It didn't exist. You would go to professional development. They would tell you how to do it. You'd bring it back to your class. 
and it is impossible. By the time you hit October, it's just like, no, we're not doing our interactive notebooks today. We're too behind. We need to go boom, boom, boom. And you're just now um, falling behind more and more and it kind of gets put by the wayside. So I said to myself, if I could create this interactive notebook so teachers did not have to go and spend all of their time finding these little interactive notebook activities that relate right to their lesson, I just built it out myself. That way they don't, it's right there for them and they could just use this and students would be super successful because they'd walk away with this interactive notebook. That would have helped me as a teacher if somebody would have showed me how to, or give me an interactive notebook and say, here you go. Now all you have to do is teach. You have everything you need. So that is where I started building Nitty Gritty Science from is trying to make materials that teachers were having to struggle and build themselves. When we know these resources work, but nobody was making these resources. Like we know, like as a teacher, we know what helps our students, but they weren't out there because the publishing companies didn't do this. The publishing companies made textbooks and workbooks and tests and not the creativeness and not the engaging pieces that we wanted for our students. So then I started building out that and then that is where it was born. And then I started building the curriculum on that. So if this is what I'm going to teach in my interactive notebook, this is the lab that I think would really relate to that. And then now that you did the lab and you did that in the lab, now let me show, now you should understand it. Show me what you know. Now you're going to do this challenge and you're going to build this and you, you know, relate it back to what you've learned already. And so that I started building out over the past decade, my curriculum around earth science and life science and physical science. We were talking about different resources for, for teachers and you recently tried some activities with the Arduino Science Physics Lab. Uh, what was your experience with that with that tool? Well, that one was um, fun because you had different um, builds in that kit. And what mm -hmm. the students would do is if any student had been to a local county fair or they've ever been on carnival rides or something, they would understand the connection because they were doing like um, grab, they were tying it and making it relevant to Gravitrons and different carnival games and toys. So that would definitely help the students make the connection to something that they've already um, done in real life. They were bringing in this past knowledge again, right? And do you think a student would ever think going on a carnival ride, riding a Gravitron would ever play back into their science class? I doubt it if you were to ask them when they were going on the Gravitron. So that was great where that the students could go ahead and collect that data and made it relevant to what they have already had a previous experience. And that is how the Arduino kit kind of grabs and hooks those students because they made it relevant to what they already did. So it, it, they were a great kit and it gave a lot of different options for the students to do those different builds. If I would have had like the Arduino app you know, on a phone handheld that all the students have access to when I was teaching in the classroom, that would have been such a headache saver. And right there, they're getting real time data. They're seeing it hooked up to the um, device that they have just built. And right there, they're able to see that and make the connection and they can adjust the app and change things and change parameters on it. And so they are doing this themselves. And you know how students are with their phone. They are so much more willing to try things than adults where adults will be like, oh, no, no, don't, no, don't mess up my phone. Don't move my apps where students are just like, boop, boop, boop. And right there, they can manipulate how things, uh, the controls, so they can kind of see the variables and stuff. And so I think that is what the students love to see. They like to manipulate on their own and they are going to pick it up so much faster than someone like me as an adult would. I would be so like, we're going to focus on this one parameter. We're going to collect that. No, no, no. Students don't want to do that. They want to dive right in and they can pick up things very quickly. And now they can make those connections, which was uh, such a great tool with this app to use. So I loved it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's great when you can try out all the different ones and you can immediately see, okay, this one reacts to this, this one, this. So you can play around. And like you said, if it's on your own phone, you can also continue at home. So it's not just the school environment. That that's absolutely right. And, and that's why, you know, that's why it kind of worked when we said, because we, we were doing the kit and there were at that time still a lot of students um, still learning from home and virtual. And yeah. there is now a huge population that's going to homeschooling. And so that is exactly 
the students can use this on their own and they can collect all that data. You don't have to have a big school lab to do all that. So you're absolutely right. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been an absolute pleasure. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you so much to Dr. Erika Colon. Mm -hmm. She, it, it was a great conversation. Really interesting, so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we also have an article about Erika Colon called Mind the Gap. Meet the teacher actively trying to close the gender gap in science on our website. Mm -hmm. And to learn more about Erica, you can go to nittygrittyscience.com or mm -hmm. nittygrittyscience on Instagram. Yeah, she also has a TikTok channel with a bunch of very fun, easy to make a science experiments. So she's very active and That's she awesome. has a lot of resources. Also, Erica organizes and hosts the Champions for Science, a virtual conference series for science educators. And you can learn more on the website there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can listen to the full interview with Erica on our Edivision podcast. So mm -hmm. she tells us more about how to attract more students to the science field and the resources she has created to support teachers. And you can find the link to the podcast from the chat and from our Edivision site. Go to yes. Anchor, Apple or Spotify and search for Arduino Edivision. Yeah. So here is our website with all the 10 episodes we have. Uh, now they are published, so this is the one for for Erica, and uh, it is it's very interesting what we talk about with her, and she also addressed the gender gap in in science and in technology in general. So it's very interesting what she has to say. So don't miss this episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, if you want also to learn science in a fun and a handsome way. We have 50% discount on the Arduino Science Physic uh, lab that Erica also mentioned until the end of this week, somber, uh, Sunday, November 14. You can see the discount when you visit our digital store. Mm -hmm. And developed in partnership with Google, the kit challenges students to explore forces, motion, magnetism, conduct and conductivity uh, to make their own hypotheses like mm -hmm. real scientists and log data on the Arduino Science Journal app. Yeah, that's true. So here is, uh, I think we also shared that while Erica was talking, but mm -hmm. this is a, the learning platform of the physics uh, science kit. So the cool thing about this is that you don't need any any code no. whatsoever. You can just pick up the phone exactly. and it's there already. And then cause... you just experiment, start experimenting, and it, it's very cool, all the activities that you have there. So and if you want to check It's cool out. because our phone already has these amazing sensors in them. So... It's really cool that you can access them with the Science Journal app and yep. uh, create awesome experiments. That's true. Mm -hmm. So talking about the, so the Science Journal app, let's go back to the experiment that we show you at the beginning of the show. Yeah, I finally so. got an excuse to play the synthesizer. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I was curious and uh, I, we played some sounds from the synthesizers to see what would happen on the app. So yeah, it, maybe we can play the video on the side. Is that possible? Yeah. Can we play the video again <laughs> of our experiment? Yeah, but we we essentially just, we measured the sounds in hertz and in decibels. And I played some different notes uh, on different volumes. And you could see that directly on the app with, you know, direct visual feedback. So that was really cool. Yeah. And, and with the help with the Science Journal app and the sensors that we have there, we can start, uh, we measured those sounds that the synthesizer was or you also mm -hmm, were playing mm -hmm. so it's very interesting to see like the visual of the of the sounds right because of course we cannot see that but yeah, then yeah, yeah with the app you can you can actually see those and we tried one thing where uh we went outside of the range of frequencies where we can't hear anything and i adjusted the frequency of the sound and the science journal app could you know analyze that data but so i thought that was pretty cool yeah so I think here we can at this at the at the experiment we had it before yes
Mm-hmm. Right. I had a lot of fun doing it. So. That's yeah. It. So so the the idea is that now that we're celebrating science and we all like music, so it was we thought that it was a very cool idea to try and experiment combining sound and and music. Mm-hmm. So. So we hear uh, what happened at different frequencies, right? With the music, like the pitch and the note, high or low. You essentially uh, visualize what yeah, you hear, exactly. which is really yeah, cool. So exactly. So that, that's a cool part. So with the Science Journal app, then you learn how to measure these sounds around you and explore if there are sounds that your phone hears that you might not. So mm-hmm, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So the Arduino Science Journal is a mobile application. I want to try to show you. Uh, that you can download. It's uh, open source, it's free, and it's available to download for Android and iOS. So you just go there, download, and you can start measuring different things with your phone. It also has not only to measure hertz hertz and um, decibels, but light and with the accelerometer of the phone. So you can also try different things. And by the way, we also have a, a website here. Yes, so this is the the Science Journal uh, platform. So there are these are this is also open. You can just go there and try it. We have different experiments with electricity, light, motion, and sound. So you can try some of these. Some experiment uh, uses the Arduino uh, Blessings board, but it's very cool to try. So if you can go there and take a look, you will have a lot of fun using Absolutely. your phone. Mm-hmm. Cool. 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 And you can also build your own musical instrument if you want, like a piano made out of cans, paper, or even fruits, and use the Science Journal app to measure that in the music that you make. So let's take a look. Let's. That's so fun. (laughs) So you can try and it's actually very easy to build this kind of 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 musical instruments with what you have at home. Yeah, and I know that there's lots of tutorials on how to do it as well. So uh, yeah, you should try it. Really cool. Uh, Imagine that you can play your favorite song with uh, cola or uh, bottles, you know? Yeah, it's 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 super fun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Arjun was asking, how can he get the app? So you just go to the Google Play uh, or the, um, what is the name for the? The iOS, iOS store, yeah, maybe the Apple, the App Store, <laughs> the, the App store. store, and then you just look for Arduino Science Journal app, and then you just download it. Yep. So uh, again, it's compatible with Android and iOS. Mm-hmm. So it it's really very fun to just start measuring things with the sensors that you have on your phone. Yeah, and I, I actually tried to measure the decibels of the office for twelve. Ah, minutes yeah, or how something. was that? <laughs> uh, it's a very quiet office, actually. Yeah, we are so, quiet. Very quiet. <laughs> very focused here. So. Uh, yeah. So again, you can start uh, trying uh, only with your phone, and it's a lot of it's very different, and you may, it makes you being aware of your environment exactly. when you start uh, making visible the invisible. So mm-hmm. it's really cool trying trying with this. Yes. So uh, and try also your experiments. Try to build uh, your musical instruments like we show, and of course share with us if you have any experiment. We would love to see for sure those. Yes. So. That's it, That's it for Edubition Season 4. This was our last episode. Thank you, you all, for joining us this season mm-hmm. for this, during these 10 episodes. 
Uh, we hope you have learned and had uh, fun with us. And also we want to thank our amazing guests. Yes, yes. And we're coming back though on Thursday, yes. December 16th at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Central, Central European Europe. time, yes, of yes. course. <laughs> For our Edivision holiday special episode. Yes, so we have one more in around one one month, right? Yes, mm -hmm. December 16th. So we will talk about the role of play, games, and logic engagement in education. Mm -hmm. And we will talk about olfactory interactions. Wow. What is that? Hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, with our special guest, Simon Niedenthal, Associate Professor of Interaction Design at Malmö University in Sweden. So super interesting topics. Don't miss it because yes, it's I, really cool. Yeah, I guess you have never heard about olfactory interaction, right? So how no. is that and how it works? What we have it? some projects and experiments. So you don't miss that you can't episode. Miss it. Exactly. <laughs> so see you then in around a month, December 16th. Yes. Thank you so much. And if you have uh, some holiday projects that you want to share with us, share it. remember that you can do it exactly there on Arduino CC Education Edubition. And you, we can show that project here live. Mm -hmm. And you can get also some cool Arduino goodies. So don't forget right. to do that. So nice. Again, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Yes, it was an awesome ep uh, season four. So Absolutely. hope to see you soon. Take care and bye. Bye bye.